is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. afternoon i hope everyone listening is having a wonderful day so far it's a beautiful tuesday and yes there is a lot going on in the news but guess what we have life and where there's life there is hope you are listening to beyond the rock i am your host dazzy let me turn this microphone up just a little bit so i can make sure and hear everyone and let me give these numbers out early if you want to participate and have your opinions heard for two two four seven nine six four two two four seven nine six it's good to be in studio tonight and i am no longer contagious so everyone relax (laughs) you know life happens so it's good to be here and tonight i want to continue the topics that we started with we started talking about you know immigration and a lot of votes came in since then a lot of persons listeners you guys have reached out to me And giving me your opinions on different locations around the world that you as a Bahamian are not only looking at, but would consider for relocating. And I believe these conversations are important. Not to encourage anyone to relocate by any means. You know, the Bahamas is still a beautiful place. Yes, it has its problems. It does, but so does everywhere else in the world. No matter how well structured they are. And that's not an excuse. I'm just saying, you know, sometimes we can see What's going on here? But if you just look sometimes to our neighbors to the left or the right, and you'll see that they have significant challenges as well. However, some of us are better suited for certain challenges in certain climates, certain social environments more than others. And so if that is the case, and if you are a Bahamian that either wants to be abroad, is already abroad, then this show is a safe haven for you. Because on this show, we very much lean into critical thinking, logic, balance, accountability, and looking at the great big picture beyond what our peers just want us to see. And I think it's very important that we have these dialogues. So if you want to chime in, I love to know where you're listening from. Please go ahead and let me know. It doesn't matter what part of the Bahamas you're listening in or in the U.S. or in the U.K. or wherever you are. Please tell me. Um, And go ahead and text. 242 is the area code. 422-4796. So I want to start off today's show by playing a clip. It is not going to be solely what our topic is about, but it's a few things that I think we need to address. It's time to do a little bit of housekeeping. I like to do these check-ins, you know, periodically when we do these shows, just to kind of see where we are. Because if you pick up the news, look at the newspaper, I'm looking at it right now, very distressing, right? There's a lot going on. And I don't know Bahamians culturally to be citizens or residents of this country where suicide has been a topic. I mean, it has happened over the years, but it has never been the norm. So we have some work to do. We have some things to talk about. I want to just play a clip. It's about three minutes, but I promise you, you should find it interesting. And then on the other side, let's dig into it a little bit. And then we're going to talk about more about immigration. I think our focus tonight is the UK. And then the votes are in for next week. And so far, Panama is the winner. So you can go ahead and send your votes in for what the other country is going to be. But so far, Panama is in the lead. And I think Ghana is second, which is surprising to me. (laughs) But I I think it's great. So, yeah, we're going to get into it. So, yeah, let's go ahead and play the clip. You're listening to Beyond the Rock. Sit through the clip for me. I think you're going to find it very, very interesting. And then we're going to dive into a couple of things. Many of us spend a large part of our lives, in one way or another, feeling stuck. 
That is, in a state where a strong desire to move forward on an issue meets with an equally strong compulsion to stay fixed where one is. For example, we might at one level powerfully want to leave a job in finance in order to retrain in architecture, but at the same time remain blocked by a range of doubts, hesitations, counter-arguments and guilty feelings. Or we might be impelled to leave our marriage while simultaneously unable to imagine any realistic life outside of it. To act feels horrific, but doing nothing is killing us as well. Every avenue appears shut off. And so one ruminates, turns over the question late at night, tries the patience of therapists, and watches life go by with mounting anxiety and self-disgust. As an outsider, one might be tempted to ask questions to move things on. Why don't you try to enroll in a course to see if you might like a new area of work? Why don't you discuss your dissatisfactions with your partner? Why don't you go to counselling? What about splitting up? But we're likely to find that our friend can't make any progress, whatever we say. It seems as if they are subject to a kind of law disbarring them from progressing. Not the sort of law you'd find in the statutes of the country they live in, but some sort of personal law. A law that might go like this. Make sure you don't achieve satisfaction in your career. Make sure your relationship has no life in it, but cannot be abandoned. Make sure you aren't happy in the place you live in. In order to understand the origins of these laws, we have to look backwards. Difficult childhoods and the complicated families they unfold in might be the originators of a lot of these restrictive, unspoken laws whose impact echoes across our lives. Some of these laws might go like this. Make sure you never shine. It would upset your little sister. Or you have to be cheerful not to let my depression break through. Or never be creatively fulfilled because it would remind me of my envy. Or reassure us that we are clever by winning all the prizes at school. Or we need you to achieve to make us feel okay about ourselves. Or you would disappoint me if you became boisterous and one day sexual. Of course, no one ever directly says such things in a family. Laws couldn't operate if they could so easily be seen. But the laws are there nevertheless, holding us into a particular position as we grow up. And then, once we've left home, continuing to surreptitiously distort our personalities away from the path of their legitimate growth. It can be hard to draw any connection between adult stuck situations and any childhood laws. We may miss the link between our reluctance to act at work and a situation with dad at home 30 years before. Yeah, so if you want to continue to listen to that, that is the school of life. You can go right on YouTube, pull it up. And the topic of that particular is on feeling stuck. And the reason why I wanted to play that clip is because a lot of what we're seeing now, not just individually, but on the government level, on, you know, personal and individual levels, it's reflecting feeling stuck. And it's not a real thing. And the reason why it is so so, so common is because society reinforces the concept of being stuck, feeling stuck with these invisible laws as well. So what do you do? Because technically you have free will. You can do anything you want to do. I remember when I was a very young adult and you have these laws that govern your life. And one of the things that growing up in the household that I did, my dad was very much against processed food. So we were never a family that Went to the food store and was able to pick up, you know, chips, cookies, anything like that. It just did not happen, right? We didn't even go through the aisle. It was off limits. You know, we were very aware of the dangers um, and the ills and the ill health that would follow, you know, highly processed food and that being a big part of your diet. So I didn't even think to do it. Fast forward as an adult. One day I just realized, I said, hey, you know, I can go ahead and purchase and do anything I want to do. And that led to like a one week binge, right? I got very sick. But the point is, technically, we have free will. So what is the difference between someone that is successful, someone that's making decisions, someone that's seemingly acting with agency, meaning they're controlling their own life, and someone else who, whose life appears stagnant, 
who's still discussing things that happened 10 years ago, 15 years ago, as if it happened yesterday. What creates that? And so to look beyond that, we have to look at our childhood conditioning. And it's not a popular topic by any means, but the rubber is hitting the road, Bahamas. We are now at a place where we're seeing manifestations of us as a culture, completely ignoring things like mental health, um, making it seem like it's less important, pretending as if environment and socioeconomic reasons do not correlate to certain outcomes. We have indulged ourselves in what I like to call luxury beliefs. And what is the end result? What are we seeing? And it's horrifying because each life is precious. And so if you live in a society that simultaneously believes in Christianity as a concept and that life is precious, that does not allow women access to abortions because of these Christian beliefs, but simultaneously has no social safety net for those same women, and there's no social construct that would encourage them to live in a traditional way without shame, what then are you left with as a society? And so our, our chickens are coming home to roost. And a lot of the Bahamians that hold beliefs that do not correlate with what our society does, not what we say, because we say a lot of things, but what do we see? Because if you look at our obesity rate, if you look at our rates of alcoholism, if you look at our rates of um, rape and sexual assault, and this is just what's on the books because a lot of it is not even recorded. It paints a very different picture than what we say. And so we have to face reality. What kind of society do we want to live in? Who do we want to be? Because we cannot do whatever it is we want to do and feel like there should be no consequence or no end result. There's no natural law of cause and effect. And a big part of that mindset has come from the media. We are guilty. And when I say the media, not necessarily locally, but on a global scale. Because a lot of what is done now publicly is in the event to sell things, sell products, commercials, you know, get people to buy in on certain concepts. But that may not be what is the best for you. And so if we have free will, but at the same token, that free will is canceled out by childhood conditioning, unresolved traumas, unaddressed mental constructs that we face that limit us from excelling, that limit us from making certain decisions, that limit us from seeing the bigger picture, that limit us from making our emotions the priority in every single thing that we do, what kind of society will we have? And what do we have currently? And so we have to talk about this. There's, there's no way to avoid it. You know, obviously this show is called Beyond the Rock. So Bahamians Beyond the Rock often message me very reluctant to speak and talk about what it is they're doing and what they're up to. Because in their minds, they do not feel that their successes will necessarily be welcome. Now, whether that is true or not true, I don't. I don't have a, a strong opinion one way or the next. And the reason why is because on social media, a lot of it is celebrated. But you don't know what their personal stories were, were before they relocated. And we do not want a nation of people who are moving under duress, who are running from the country. We don't want that. We want strong allies in areas around the world to strengthen this nation. Because it's not a lot of us. We're very endangered species. And then people like me who claim half, right? <laughs> the other half belongs to, to the Turks and Caicos, right? That's the UK. Half and half. And so we need to strengthen as many of our ties globally as we can, which means every single one of us taking personal accountability for how we show up in the world, how we present ourselves, our daily activity, and what we're doing collectively to progress. And so that may mean things looking a lot different in our personal lives, right? And I, and I have this conversation knowing that that sort of self-awareness is also a privilege. I'm aware of that. But we still have to have these conversations because the end result is not what we need it to be. 
you know, and there's so much focus on politics. And let me tell you, that is one of the, that particular topic I have never really been interested in. And it's not because I don't think that it matters, but at the end of the day, our greatest contribution may not be in that particular way. You can only do so many things with policy. You can only do so many things, you know, if you have a permanent secretary being a governor on what it is that you do anyway, right? So how many, how much autonomy do you really have when you ascend to these positions? You still got to deal with bureaucracy. You still got to be with people in their personal biases. And so a lot of times you have well-meaning Bahamians that ascend in positions of government. But when they get there, they get lost in the sauce. Biologically, we are wired to conform. And if you're an outlier, a lot of times you are shunned. So is being a responsible citizen, is being healthy, is being self-aware and tending to our mental health, is that being an outlier in this country? Or is that the standard and the norm? I see a text coming in. I'm going to read them in just a second. 242-422-4796. 242-422-4796. So I had a caller, um, I don't remember which week it is, one of the weeks, and you know he was very upset, saying, I'm advocating for Bahamas running away. You can't run away. That is impossible. Because no matter where you go in life, there you are. Running away is not even a real concept. How can you run away? You're taking your... And who you are <laughs> governs a lot of the results you get in life. How you treat people, how you interact with people, right? The decisions you make, personally. No one can sabotage you like you. So what do you mean run away? It's impossible, right? it's, You can't do it. So let me read a text. Hi, Dazi. Checking in from Carmichael Road. Thank you so much for listening. Um, we have a check-in from Miami Beach. Thank you so much. Um, we have a check-in. I think this one says Washington. <laughs> and texter, you never say which one it is. Are you the one in D.C. or are you in Washington State? Please let us know. I think they're in D.C. though. But thank you so much for checking in. Yes, we're going to do, we're going to shift a little bit um, in topics right now. But yeah, you cannot run away. That's a fallacy. And I don't want us to think that that is the answer. Because as much determination as it takes to make it in your hometown, to go abroad, that takes determination as well, because you're going to be homesick. You're not going to be able to call on the people you know and the spaces that you know to make certain things easy. right? You don't have an auntie, uncle, cousin, perhaps, where you go abroad. You have to cue the line like everyone else. There may be a language barrier. There may be a skin color barrier. There may be a foreign bias against you. And a lot of that fair is because of how we, as Bahamians, look at foreigners, right? And how we classify them. So sometimes that in of itself is an unconscious stopping point. But you, we, as individuals, have to look at where we are and how where we are serves us. And if you do the math, and the math is not math, by all means, spread your wings. It doesn't mean you're abandoning your country. You're going to carry that flag wherever you go. But I want to see Bahamians thrive and do well. And sometimes a result of being stagnant or the cause of being stagnant is purely mindset. You could wake up tomorrow with a different perspective. But you cannot run away from yourself. At some point, you have to face yourself. And so... You know, my condolences, my heart goes out to, you know, any family member experiencing loss. I myself have, have dealt with tremendous loss. So I know what it feels like. And so context adds another layer. But during this time, we ourselves have to take stock of our own lives personally. And, and decide who you're going to be. Because we are able to make these decisions. We are able to. <laughs> it's not something anyone else can, can do for us. We have to do this. And, you know, I know it sounds like I'm belaboring a point. I know it does. And I'm so sorry. But it has to be said. Because I'm tired. I, you know, I go on social media and I read so many comments. I, <laughs> it is a thankless thing. And that is just a, a relic from 
Well, that's just something uh, left behind habit from years of social media management, right? Which I don't do anymore. I'm completely burnt out. Please don't reach out to me. <laughs> I, I cannot do it again. I am <laughs> burnt out. Okay? Completely burnt out. Because it's a 24-hour job. You know, there's, it's just... If I have to explain to another CEO the purpose of social media, I'll scream. I can't, I just can't do it. So I have shifted that now into a slightly different direction, adjacent. Call I'm so sorry. You're going to have to give us just a second. We're trying to get um, the calling situation <laughs> sorted out. I do see you calling. Please call back. Um, after on the other side of the break, we should have ourselves together then. I'm so sorry. I want to pick up so bad, but I just <laughs> I can't. We have to get something organized. But please do call back. Or text. But, you know, we have to, at the end of the day, just look at context. And so I see comments all the time that said, well, you don't know what um, such and such was going through. And, 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 you know, these people, this and that. And, you know, they have all this responsibility. And, you know, this isn't happening. That isn't happening. Yes, you know. However, how did we arrive at this place? How? And this, is, this should not be a controversial or a painful conversation. How did we arrive at this place? It's not a conversation lacking empathy. This is something that I had to strip down and deal with within my own self and my own choices. I had to do it. I had to do this process. It is ugly, but you must do it. Because if you don't do it, you will not grow. You will stay stagnant. You will still be obsessed with things that happened 10, 15 years ago that have no bearing on today that you are fabricating in your mind, you have to be able to move forward if you're going to have any semblance of peace and growth in life. So we have to do that also as a nation. And so if you have these comments that basically justify people's actions, how did they arrive there in the first place? Now, it may not have been their fault on their decision-making process. Maybe they are acting unconsciously, they're acting unconsciously because, you know, this is how they were programmed basically from up until the age of seven. No conscious thought. Just acting out, acting out. Now they find themselves in a certain mess. That may be the case. But wherever we can, we have to be able to use the ability of logic and reason to say, how did we arrive at this spot? And so people get very touchy, especially when I see this phrase used, and I'm going to touch on this, single mother. Whenever I see that phrase... That comes laced with so much. But you as a single mother, and I'm speaking from someone who at one point, who did that on their own for years after a divorce. Okay? I never characterized myself as that because I never saw myself as that. I was divorced, not a single mother. Because what, what connotations does that carry? Pitying, poverty, hardship, entitlement? No, man, the world don't care. The world does not care about what you have done and your decisions to bring you to a certain spot. And I say this with love. The world, honestly, truly, this I'm hoping is the most loving conversation we can have today. The world does not care about you. And that should not hurt your feelings. Because you should care about you. And your life and your welfare. I'm so sorry, caller. Please call back on the other side of the show. We're trying to get something sorted out with the phone lines. So I cannot pick up and take your call. But please, I'm not snubbing you. I'd love to talk to you, but just on the other side of the break, um, you should be good to go. Or please go ahead and text if you can't wait, and I can read it now. But the world does not care. The world does not care. The world does not owe you anything. And beware of people who say, well, the world should. Why should it? People have their own lives. They have their own problems. You're not entitled to other people's money and their resources based on what they did to work and just give it away. We have to stop that as a nation. And as people, and especially as black people, as a subsector, I know my, my listening audience is mixed, but specifically, that is what it is. We, we can no longer take that posture because you, we as a nation will constantly be taken advantage of if we take that posture. We have to take stock and say, okay, I made certain decisions. These are the result. This is what I have to deal with. <laughs> To get myself either out of this decision, to make this decision bearable, or to move forward in progress. It may not be a fun thing to do, but playing the victim will not advance you. You can only do that for so many years. People get tired. They don't want to hear it. They want to hear the narrative. Their lives go on. They're doing the hard things. 
And so are we willing to do the hard things? Are we willing to, like the Chinese say, eat bitter? Are we willing to eat bitter? Because coddling people <laughs> is not helping them. And a lot of times, helping them in certain ways is just enabling. You know, there, there, was, a, there was a post that went around, I would say about maybe two weeks ago. And someone was telling their story and their triumph. And simultaneously, while I was reading the story, I was aware of someone who tried to help the same person and they got majorly screwed, right? They lost thousands of dollars <laughs> trying to assist the same situation. And everyone is like, you know, applauding the person, you know, God made a way, blah, 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 blah. The world does not owe you anything. And we have to take accountability for it. And it's an ugly thing to do. I agree. But we have to take accountability. So running away, you're not going to run from yourself. And there's no other government that wants to give you a handout for you to come over there. In fact, they're excluding that. They don't want it. Most immigration is set up where they're like, give me your best and brightest. They don't want the downtrodden and the, the fleeing. It's extremely easy to, nav to navigate immigration when you're rich. Easy. It's not hard. You could buy, you can buy them papers. Legitimately, through investment, right? Not by any nefarious means. Other than that, you need to have some sort of talent, some sort of exceptional ability, education. And we just have to accept that. And we can no, no longer cling to narratives that do not serve us. We as a nation should never, Bahamas, I'm talking to you, embrace the, 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 the <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. The... I don't want to put this delicately. I want to describe this as worst as I can, actually. The degradation and the garbage that's put in pop culture, that's, that's pushed as black American culture, why are we ingesting this? Why? So we're going to ingest this. We're going to be completely hypocritical with our own values and pretend to be a Christian nation, but live completely opposite. And then we're going to say, oh, we don't know what's going on and things so hard. Man, be for real. It's ridiculous. You know, we got, we got to have these conversations. What are we doing? You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a disservice being done. And I'm very unpopular for some of my opinions. So when people recognize me sometimes, I'm like, oh, God. What did I say? How do you feel about it? And what I hear? <laughs> right? So that's why sometimes when you hear me in public, I'm not overly friendly. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what, what, what episode you caught. I don't know how you feel about what you heard. <laughs> right? I don't know. You can take it personal. I, don't, I moved on. The minute this mic shot and I go in my car, I've moved on mentally. Right? <laughs> and you still like a show I did two years ago. I, I don't know what to tell you. Right? But if you're pleased with it, please, by all means. But if you don't, I mean, your opinion is valid. I will listen. But, you know, it's not that serious. So let me read a couple of texts. So this one says, checking in from Zephyr Hills, north of Tampa. Not going back to that place. Too silly. <laughs> you mean the Bahamas? <laughs> listen, you got to come on vacation, though, at least, right? You got to come on vacation. Here's another text. <laughs> For y'all being real real today this is crazy this is not what the show is about this is not a bashing the bahamas show so this one says <laughs> dazzy i'm very comfortable where i am i'm not accused of being white anytime i do something positive for myself or my family simple things like loving and not cheating on my wife eating healthy food and exercising and going on vacation twice a year socially the bahamas is not where it was for me it never was and so i went to college and never came back i've been living here all my life and i am happy okay behaving abroad point taken good for you i'm glad that you're happy socially so, you know some countries just think we just want to align with just personal values as as a whole and this is the bahamas is not the end all we all right we need to travel we need to be exposed we, we have to do that this is not a lot of the things that we think are the norm are not the norm but who is the norm it depends on what your decision is and if you like the outcome for your life that's all it is we're about to go to a break in just a second, but I just want to highlight, and this I thought was a very interesting quote, right? And if you Google luxury beliefs examples, these will come up. 
So it says, and I just want to give like a definition of what a luxury belief is. So it says, like with diamond rings or designer clothes of old, upper class people don a luxury belief to separate themselves from the lower class. These beliefs in turn produce real, tangible consequences for disadvantaged people, further widening the divide. You hear that? I mean, let me repeat that one more time. I'm sure if you catch it. Listen to this. Like with diamond rings or designer clothes of old, upper class people don a luxury belief to separate themselves from the lower class. These beliefs in turn produce real, tangible consequences for disadvantaged people, further widening the divide. What is happening? You're being sabotaged, right? Sabotaged. You being sabotaged. It is what it is by buying and falling for these luxury beliefs. You fall for it. <laughs> Don't fall for it. It's, it's propaganda. So let me read more. Just as fashionable clothing will soon be outdated, so will today's fashionable beliefs. In the future, expect the upper class to defame even more values, including the ones they hold dear in their quest to gain top dog status. This is by Rob Henderson. So what is a luxury belief and how are you being duped? One example of a luxury belief is that all family structures are equal. This is not true. Evidence is clear that families with two married parents are the most beneficial for young children. And yet affluent, educated people raised by two parents, two married parents are more likely than others to tell you that they believe monogamy is outdated, marriage is a sham, or that all families are the same. We're falling for it. And you know who falls for it the hardest? So-called intellectuals. How do I know this? Because I used to fall for it all the time. Right? You fall for all kinds of stuff. Atheism. I mean, it's just, you're falling for luxury beliefs. Meanwhile, the same people that espouse these beliefs privately don't live like that. Their rates of marriage have not dropped. Their rates of certain things, these old-fashioned beliefs that they make you believe are now to be scorned, they're still living that way, gaining wealth, acquiring wealth, and building assets while you squander your time. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Right? Being a fourth-wave feminist. It is what it is. Right? The, the first wave was very valid. Second, yes. Anything beyond fourth? Third? <sighs> Anyhow. If you go ahead and you Google it, there's one more quote. So this is J.K. Rowling, and she is the one who, maybe not said what she wrote, because I don't want people to get distracted. <laughs> but she tweeted, and I, I save this because it is very true. Vulnerable and traumatized women pay the highest price for luxury beliefs. These are the real world consequences. And so you have real world consequences. You listen to music, you let it influence you. You watch movies, you let them influence you. Influence your beliefs, influence what you believe about things, how you act. Then you go ahead and act on these ways. You destroy whatever possible legacies that you could have built because of acting on that way. You have a gender war going on, all this nonsense. You're holding animosity to people from 10, 15 years ago that have no real world <laughs> relevance in today's world. You're listening to music that tells you that, you know, it's fun and okay and the preferential way for you to be is depressed and unhappy. That is what the lyrics say. I listen to music all the time and I always laugh because 90% of it is just toxic garbage and it's sad for me because I adore music. And so you listen to all of this and then you act this way unconsciously because you don't even realize that it's influencing you. You're getting certain outcomes and then who must pay now the price? Oh, the government should now pay. Because things hard. And this one should pay. There's no self-accountability for any decision making. It's always everybody else's fault. Somebody did this to me. Constant victimhood. We have, it, it, we have to stop. It, it is done. Because there are now consequences for this. And people are suffering from the societal's um, advocating of them playing the victim roles without accountability. And then people get so angry. Because you'll have one or two people in the comments and say, well... How did they arrive at this spot? And they go crazy. 
You shouldn't judge. Listen to me. <laughs> Stop telling people they shouldn't, shouldn't do. And if they judge, so what? Nothing will smite them down. They, it's a free world. They can do what they want. It may seem low empathy, but it's still valid. And anytime you have a very strong emotional reaction to something, you have to look at what is the nugget of truth and what it is that you believe that it's stirring up. Because if someone walks in and calls you a frog, you're, you're unbothered. You know you're not a frog. But if someone calls you and says you're lazy and you on the, you at their throat, why? Is there some little nugget deep down in you that believes that? Because that's the only thing that will incite that kind of rage and upset. So we have to look at ourselves. We have to first know thyself. We have to do it as a nation. It's time for us. Is there a social safety net for people that have, would have made the wrong decisions unconsciously or consciously? Is there? No. You know what that means? You have to live in this country very carefully because there is no net. Everyone doesn't have family that can afford it or is willing to do it. So you cannot live as if you are able to abide by the same luxury beliefs that the consequences for our neighbors, maybe somewhere else, is that they get to go on WIC or they get to go on welfare <laughs> and they get Section 8 housing. Do you have these options here? Yes or no? Can you afford to live that same way? Yes or no? We have to look at these things. It's a hard conversation, but it is what it is. If you can remain here, whose fault is it all? Who's going to pay for it all? I don't know. I don't know. I want to take a break. And on the other side of the break, I am going to take your calls. If you feel like calling back, if you're too mad. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't get to them earlier. But call back. 323 6232. 323-6232. Call back after the break, please. Or just send me the text. I'll go ahead and read them. I saw a few of you texted instead. You're listening to Beyond the Rock. My name is Dazzy. I'm your host. And we're talking about some things tonight. We're going to touch on UK immigration in just a second. But I had to get this rant off my chest because we are at the point in our nation where we have to take accountability individually and accountability as a nation because no one is coming to save us. The only thing they come to do is exploit and take more of our beautiful natural resources for them. That's it. They don't care about us because we have to care about ourselves. That's not their job. People come to take. You got to stop. So please stick and stay. Go ahead and send me a text, 242-422-4796. I will go ahead and read them. So you're listening to Beyond the Rock. I'm your host, Dazzy. Stick and stay. I'll be right back. Sebastian Alliance Group, SAG, where we empower small businesses to succeed, where we make the impossible possible, with our e-commerce is possible, no more brick and mortar, get digital, SAG is right here for you. U.S., Canada, Bahamas You can build a website for your products Accepting credit cards or digital payments We make it easy, the process is seamless Sebastian Alliance Group, SAG Where we empower small businesses to succeed You can find it all at Builders Mall from cement, plumber, block, plumbing, and electrical to paint, lights, fannies, and tiles. Not to mention all the tools you could possibly need to get the job done. So if you're starting a major project, adding the finishing touches, or just doing some repair or rental work around the house, FYP, the paint center, and tile king can help. Stop by or call 601-8453. Located 69 Wolf Road, Nassau. You can find it all at Builder Small. Building, painting, and tiling. The Bahamas. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. You can buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, DeGregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Now is the time to reach your Grand Bahama market with affordable packages, including print and digital. Call GB News Sales Representative Kavandre at 822-6717 or message him on WhatsApp for ad rates. Classified ads are now available every Tuesday as well. Keep up with everything every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian.
And we are back. You are listening to Beyond the Rock. I am your host, Dazzy. And tonight, we're doing a little bit of a check-in. Where are we, Bahamas? Where do we want to be? Who are you? You know, I like to go on these tangents. I have to do it. Because it is my responsibility, being behind this mic, to do this. I don't like doing it, but I have to do it. And these are not my most popular shows. When I say they're not my most popular, they are the most listened to for some reason. I don't understand. It seems like everyone will find them. You know, the recordings will just live on forever. People will quote me verbatim. But they're not the most well-received. And that's fine. But I, I, I am compelled to say it. And I must say it. Because this is nothing that I haven't <laughs> said to myself. Right? And it has made my life better. Oh, the bachatero seed. It, 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 it has made it better. So I, I have to pass that on. I'm so sorry. So UK immigration. I just want to talk about that very, very briefly. Because we did a three-part series. We talked about Canadian immigration. We talked about immigration to the U.S., um, and now we're talking about the UK and all of these developed worlds, countries, worlds, all of these developed countries. If you look up what's going on, you have a lot of their citizens actually leaving, renouncing their citizenships, migrating. So globally, there's a lot of movement where some persons are like, hey, this country does not work for me personally, and I'm going to move somewhere else. And other persons are like, I love this country. <laughs> I'm going to move here. So it's all about what personally works for you. And especially as a Bahamian, you may have pros and cons. Okay, I want this type of climate, but I prefer this, you know, with the health system. You know, I like this type of government. You know, I, free enterprise is important to me. Um, capitalism is important to me. Um, this sort of social structure is important to me. You may have a different priority list. And so nothing has to be permanent. You can always come back home. But to the Bahamians that are abroad and thriving and doing well, I applaud you. The ones that come back home and are thriving and doing well, I applaud you. Because we all need to... The world is so small. There's no reason to act like you're moving to the, to Mars. Okay? It's just... There's no need. It's not that far. You can get there by a plane. No big deal. Okay? Um, so for the UK system, it's it has a large points-based system for a lot of the immigration routes that center around... Um, employment. And so I just want to list a couple of these. I'm not going to spend too much time on this just because it's so very straightforward. It's not as complex as say the US route or even the Canadian route. Right? So you have um, the skilled worker route, you've got the global talent route, the graduate route, you've got intra company transfers, you've got intra company graduate trainee visas. You've got your startup and innovative visas, health and care. So that's, you know, persons who are in healthcare, um, social work, that sort of thing. You have creative roots for like your artists, um, your musicians. You have sporting roots um, for those that are in sports that are relevant to that region of the world. Um, you have seasonal worker um, pathways. You've got a youth mobility scheme. And I think that excludes some countries. You can double check on that. Um, if you also hold like a EU passport or you're a citizen, there's an EU settlement scheme, some portions of which may have been expired. And just as a disclaimer, I am not an immigration attorney. I am not an immigration consultant. All of the information I'm actually reading, and you can go ahead and read and do the same. www.gov.uk. You can go ahead and read it. You can go ahead and read it. There's this, it's very, very well laid out. It's very clear. There's a lot of details. There's also the right to work. Um, and you have other pathways that involve like family um, as a Commonwealth citizen or British national overseas. If you have family in the UK, um, if you, like I said, if you are you know, a Swiss citizen or you hold another passport already. Um, and also pathways if you want to study in the UK and eventually settle um, or if you just want to direct to go to live permanent. They've also got pathways for protections or asylums. Um, immigration appeals are pretty popular in the UK. They have a very complex system right now. Um, and so you can find all of this information on www.gov.uk. And visit before you go. See if the culture is something you want to acclimate to. Obviously, there's a lot of similarities. But those similarities may be things that you're fed up with as well like the legal system, right? Or the court system, depending on what sector it is you're going to work under. So you have to take that in mind. You have to take that in consideration before you just say, you know, I'm going to go. And again, you cannot run from yourself. <laughs> Wherever you go, there you are. There you are. There, there's no escaping you. 
So you have to be extremely clear on your reasons for relocating or living abroad for a certain period of time, the goals that you plan to achieve, you know, what you plan to gain from the experience, and you can always come back home. You can always come back home. Buy something in the family island, push come to shove, you know, the your favorite one. So at least you can have a spot to be, especially how, you know, Nasuvian prices sometimes kind of go above the roof. But you know, have your little plan be in place. There's nothing wrong with trying. You're not as stuck as you think. And again, if you say, well, oh, you're stuck because of finances. There's also answers and ways for that. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not because I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear it. Right. <laughs> but there are ways. If someone else in your country has done it, there are ways to do it. And not everyone has done it through nefarious means or, or, or you know, because I did a show one time talking about Bahamian wealth and the acquisition of it. And I did a poll to say, you know, who all thinks that Bahamian wealth was acquired by legitimate means. And I was so shocked because the majority of persons who responded to the poll felt as if the only way that Bahamians would have acquired wealth in this country is through, you know, some sort of illegal activity um, that they then converted into something legal or inheritance or, you know, basically having a dual identity where they had a front business that seemed to be clean and something going on in the background. I don't think that's the case. There are a lot of behemoths doing it legitimately. Now the culture for business here is extremely hostile. The cost of doing business is extremely hostile. I will agree. So it's 10 times harder. That's why some people just cut and run and then they are able to achieve. <laughs> There's one lady I wanted to come on so bad. I want to do an interview with her. She's achieved abroad in three years, what she could not do here locally in 24 years, okay, financially. And some people can hack it. But if you're someone, and I'm, I'm going to, let's have a very candid conversation right now. If you're someone that's very by the book, likes to do things the right way, you are going to struggle here. It is what it is in terms of navigating certain systems. You just are. And so you may be better suited to a system that rewards that. Especially if you were raised in a household that was very, you know, directive on the way you should be morally and otherwise. You're going to struggle. It is what it is. And that's just because the system is kind of designed not to support that. And I, and I know that's not popular, but, you know, we are not having fake conversations here. I don't want to hear anything about the talking points of what we pretend and espouse to people. Because we've already seen the reality of what it is. And so we can no longer villainize people in our society that are pushing through and trying to get things done and feel like they are entitled to owe employment to you who haven't, you know, if you haven't developed yourself and have anything to contribute. It doesn't work like that. The world doesn't work like that. The world gives you back what you give it. Being a martyr is not giving the world any sort of value, right? And so we just have to be real about these things. Let me read a couple of texts. So this one says... <laughs> This person, this person ain't liking the show at all. That's fine. That's no problem. Um, so this text, let me, I can read it. For you. <laughs> so this, this text says, um, does you sound like Candace Owens? Shame on you. I don't think I do. Okay. I don't. I, I think that I'm a lot more um, balanced. I think that I can see it from all sides and we have different backgrounds. So it is impossible. How could I espouse exactly what she thinks? There are some overlapping beliefs, but they're not identical, not by a stretch. And the reason why they're not is because I've been on both sides. I've been more on the liberal side where those were like my staunch beliefs. And I saw the end result of that. I saw the decisions I made having those beliefs and what that resulted into. And I'm still paying for some of them decisions today. Until for the next, let me see, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, for the next six years, <laughs> Right? Until I no longer have to deal with certain things. And so it is what it is. But you have to take accountability. You have to say, hey, this is my fault because this is the choice I made based on what I knew at the time. It was dumb. Here's how I'm going to remedy it or fix it or, or make sure the context of it is not too damaging. And I'm going to move forward. That's all it is. Nobody's feeling sorry for you. There's no brigade that it's going to come and rescue. We have to stop the nonsense. So here's a text. So it says, I'm a certified barber with 14 years of experience. What would be the best program to apply for? And are there any recommendations on immigration consultants? Also, a high school graduate, some college education from COB. What options do you think are available? Do you think relocating is a wise decision? So text, I vaguely remember this text, 
before. I think it was something similar, but here's what I'll say. So let's start at the top. So certified barber, 14 years of experience. That is commendable. Um, that is definitely a creative field also, aside from just being beauty related. And so in terms of immigration pathways, I don't have, sorry, any immigration consultants that I will recommend on air just because I have embedded them or use them or have the need or the use for them. So I'm not going to do that. But what I will say is based on what I've read in the past, you can approach that two ways. So you can approach that from, and it depends on which country you want to go to. So do you want to go to the UK? Do you want to go to Canada? Do you want to go to the US? Do you want to go to like Panama? So what I would recommend is looking at whatever country is going to appreciate the skills that you have and reward you handsomely for it. Now, I think personally, that's going to be the US. I don't see that being the case in Canada. I don't see that being the case in the UK. The US is the most capitalistic. They really value artisans. So in terms of you um, presenting yourself, I think you need to brand yourself as an artisan, not just as a barber. So some press would be important if you can get it. Um, if you can enter some competitions, some hair shows, I think that you should look at yourself as a brand um, of what you are, not just that you give haircuts, but you're an artist. Um, that'll open a couple pathways for you. So that'll open up an O-Visa pathway. If you can prove that you're an alien with extraordinary ability, you are the top barber in the Bahamas and you're gathering attention and you can pay for that attention, by the way, you know, that could be done with marketing. Um, but if you can prove that you are the top barber and that you give a lot of value and you would be an asset to their society, then that is a pathway. Another pathway is through, I think it's called HB3. I'm not sure, but there's a backlog and a wait list for those visas. I think it's like about two, three years. So it depends on how long you can wait. But definitely branding yourself as an alien with extraordinary ability, I would say, is the pathway to do it. Um, the second thing is the high school graduated with some college education. I recommend going to school further to further that education as a pathway. And then you'd buy yourself about four years to figure out what you're going to do after graduation. You may get an additional year of OPT. Um, and then you can turn that into you know, a job offer. Or by the time you may have met someone, dated, um, fallen in love and gotten married, that's another pathway. You may have opened a business that is doing a million, you know, that has hit a million dollars in revenue. That is another pathway. So there are so many options. It just depends on which climate is better for you and where it is that you want to go. So I hope that answers a little bit of it. I know it's a bit long winded, but there's several things to consider. But I do think relocating is a wise decision if you have it planned and if you know what it is that you're going to do when you actually get there and you don't plan to wing it and you have a lot of confidence and you have a lot of resilience. I do think it can be a wise decision. If any of those things are lacking, you should be careful and, you know, try to keep some ties here that you can potentially fall back on um, just in the event that your journey takes a lot longer than you anticipate. But the fact that you reached out and you have the desire, there's some version of you, right? And I don't know if you're in, y'all into quantum physics or not, but <laughs> there's some version of you texter that is already living abroad as a barber and an artisan. Okay. And that's the, if you believe in quantum physics, that's what they say, you know, these are different versions of us living parallel lives. I don't know what your belief is. I like to entertain theories, even if I don't believe them. I think it's, it's kind of interesting. So, you know, tap into that version of you that's already done it um, and see if this version of you wants to also pursue that as well. That's, that's what I would say. I hope I didn't get too, um, too woo woo on you. Um, here is another text. So it says, hi, um, loving the show from Goodman's Bay. There is no Calvary coming to rescue the Bahamas on your circumstances. Absolutely. And those, let me, let me, I, I've got to be careful how I say this, but a lot of times I want to be so careful. Let me see. I just could say it too bad. People could take it out of context anyway. A lot of the pontification you see on social media, you know, if you need to reach out and talk, reach out to me. Those are not real things. Um, most people are self-absorbed and into their own life and they're not going to extend help. So that is very liberating because if you do have some sort of social faux pas or fall from grace or some sort of public embarrassment, you know, it's not going to last that long. You know, two news cycles today, tomorrow, people have already moved on and forgotten what it is that you'd have done. So give yourself a lot of grace and allow yourself the ability to make mistakes, but own your circumstance and chart the best way forward, even if you have to get professional advice. You know, don't ask people for advice who you don't want your life to mimic theirs. 
just don't do that. They may be well-meaning um, or they may be trying to sabotage you. I can remember as when I was in my early 20s, you know how many women in their 40s, in their 30s, in their 50s gave me the worst life advice? And when I when I hit my 30s, I was like, you know, these were, I don't know if they meant it on purpose to sabotage, but I could never imagine me you know, giving a younger woman such horrible, <laughs> horrific advice. There was so much of it. I mean, there was one or two that were great, but so much of it was just so toxic and so awful. And so, you know, we as a society have to own that we perpetuate a lot of the the problems that we have. And not everyone has your best interest at heart. A lot of people, it's an invisible competition between you and them. A lot of people, you know, they want to see sabotage because they're not personally happy. And so you have to be careful of being very clear about what your outcome is. And sometimes that means not telling anyone your plans, right? You may just have to act and do what it is you need to do. Because when we tell people our plans, um, our brain actually kind of doesn't want to do the goal anymore anyway. So, and, and sometimes, you know, I hate to say this, but a lot of times even your spouse is not going to necessarily want the highest and best version of you being yourself because they're concerned about their security also and so you have to take so many factors into consideration when it is you're trying to make a decision and you know what it is in your situation nobody has to tell you advice and people outside looking in can't adequately you know articulate sometimes what it is that you know and your gut is telling you to do so you get you know you got to kind of you got to do some soul searching you got to do some work you got to do some therapy you got to do some stuff in order for you to have a certain amount of clarity, right? Outside perspective. Um, here's another text. So this says, um, hi, Dazzy, listening from Cable Beach. I'm on my break, <laughs> but I will catch up the rest of the show later. Yes. So if you did not catch all of the show, you're listening to Beyond the Rock. I'm your host, Dazzy. If you did miss a portion of this, if you actually go on YouTube and you look up Beyond the Rock, Guardian, Dazzy, it pops up. And if you want to reach out to me directly, if you want to tell your story, because we're going to start doing the interviews again. Very excited to do this. (laughs) These people are brave and you will welcome them. You hear me? Because they are very, very brave sharing their stories. And Bahamas are doing incredible things abroad. Just look at the news. You know, you got, I don't even want to call names, but you have, we are excelling on a global scale. So we cannot allow the citizens that are here to be left behind, even if it's, even if it's because of their own faults, that's all well and good. Yeah, like old people say, you ain't passed nothing till you're dead. So we each one teach one. We have to collectively try to make um, our lives and our country better. And if you want to sponsor the show, please reach out to me on LinkedIn or Facebook. LinkedIn is probably easier. It's Odaz Gibbs, O-D-A-Z-G-I-B-B-S, Odaz Gibbs. No longer Benaby. Benaby, the name is retired. Um, it's Gibbs now, right? I just got married, so it's Gibbs. So if I correct you, I'm not trying to be obnoxious, but it's Gibbs now, right? <laughs> it's Mrs. Gibbs. It is what it is. So please go ahead and reach out to me either on Facebook or LinkedIn. And let's get this thing together because I believe conversations like this are important. And if you want to contribute to these conversations, please reach out to me and we can make it happen. So you are listening to Beyond the Rock. I had an amazing time talking to you once again condolences and my heart goes out to you know anyone that has experienced loss I know about that well but at the same token you know I just want to have the conversation externally that I had with myself internally and it's done a a deal of good because where there's life there's hope and there are people that would have been witnessing the recent suicides and they're now on the fence contemplating following suit and we cannot allow these people to be lost we have to collectively make sure that we make the country better And we do our parts individually. All right. That's my time for tonight. I am out of here. You're listening to Beyond the Rock. I'm your host, Dazzy. And next week, we are going to touch a bit on Panama. I may have a guest in the studio to kind of hang out. And then we're going to get started again with our interviewers, right? Because we got to hear from these behemoths abroad and the ones who were abroad and came back home. And do they regret it? We got to get into business. (laughs) Good night, everyone. Please drive safe. Let's pray for rain to out these fires. And we'll talk again next week. Start
Caribbean Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.